welcome to the latest Hornby Magazine layout update. If you join me here back in the Hornby Magazine workshop where I've been doing some more work on top of the layout to improve the appearance of its platforms and bring some fresh detail to that area. Uh, as you can see, we've got trains running, we've been enjoying some running sessions with the layout this month too. And in this video, you can also expect lots more too. We've also got the latest news presented by Mark. Rich is going to take you on a tour of our 009 gauge layout, Wardle Bay. Plus, we've got a roundup of all the latest arrivals in the Hornby Magazine workshop too. Add to that a little roundup and a teaser of what's coming up in the next issue of Hornby Magazine, and there's plenty to look forward to. We hope you enjoy watching, and without further ado, we're going to show you what we've been doing to top the bell. station again this month uh, trying to give that a ne nice fresh new look to the platform surfaces uh, and to improve what I'd already got there now the platforms I originally built these with the layout about eight years ago now um, so they, they've done well but they're also they're showing the signs of their age I think I could do a better job on them now um, so I decided that I'd uh, inspired by the arrival of the new dapper water tower that I give them a fresh coat of paint take off some of the gravel to make it look a bit more realistic at scale and generally improve how the station looks so the platforms, they're never quite going to manage to be perfect in their current state. I think the only way I'm really going to get the best out of the platforms in the long term is to actually replace them completely. But I haven't really got the time to do that at the moment. So it seemed a good idea to just give them a little pep up and improve them. Now, like I said, the Dapper Water Tower was the idea behind this project. And what I was going to do, I was going to install it on the platform just here. And in fact, we went through that process. But unfortunately, those products have been recalled by Dapple. Uh, there's been a problem with one of the components in them. Uh, so if you have bought a working Dapple Water Tower, uh, then you should contact your retailer where you bought it from and they'll be able to sort out a re refund for you and also then Dapple's going to produce a new batch then to replace them. So moving forward with Top the Dale then, uh, I've already finished the repainting of the near platform to you there um, but I'm going to do a little bit of work around the hole where the, uh, the water tower is going to go to make it into a little something uh, and then I'm going to show you the process I'm going to go through to repaint this one, take off the surface and get it nice and looking nice and smart like the other platform now as well. Um, so bear with me, I'll go and get my tools ready and get cracking. Right, so there's a fairly modest set of tools we actually need to make the changes to the platform here. Uh, now my favourite amongst these is one of my chisels. I found these very useful across a number of model railway applications surprisingly. Uh, I'm going to use that to take off the bulk of the ballast from the surface of the platform there. And then after that, I've got a piece of sandpaper here, we'll use that to take off any rough edges after that. And that will give me a nice smooth finish in which we can now add a new colour to it as well. Now the paints I'm using are from Omen Miniatures and they produce these bulk packs of acrylic paints. Uh, they do a set for figure painting and they also do a set for scenic modelling as well. So this is the worn tarmac colour I'm using from their scenic modelling pack. Um, and all we need to put that on is a paintbrush and a little bit of water as well. So we're going to get cracking. I'm going to clear off all the details from the platform that are already on there. Uh, some of the ones that have been taken off this platform are on there as well. So clean it all up, we'll take the fencing off and then we can get cracking with taking that ballast off. So that's the, the chiseling process done and you can see all that ballast has now gone off the surface of the platform and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just rub the sandpaper over that to take off any final bits that have still been left behind and then we can get the paintbrush out. Thank 
Now we've got the platform all repainted. Our next job is to start putting in the fencing again. Now I'm going to be using uh, Deluxe Materials new Rocket UV glue. So this comes as uh, in a starter pack, which has got this five gram tube. It comes with a little UV light as well. So what you do is you put the glue onto the bottom of the item you want to stick down, shine this light on it. That sets the glue in one to three seconds, and then you sort of move on to the next one. It's quite handy for things like fencing, so it gives you a little bit more drying time before you have to have something set in place. So we'll start off at the end of the platform. So a little bit of clean up to do on the base of each one before we go. And then get gluing these fences back in and having the station back to normal. Like I said, we want a dot of glue on the base of each fence post. Using that on the platform where we want it. Bring an UV light. I'll start setting the glue. You see that purple light, that's the UV light, and that's what actually sets this glue in place. Let's go into both sides as well. Now we're going to repeat that process all the way along this fence line, all the way across the back of the station. This next section might just take me a few minutes because it's very, one very long piece. So that's all the fencing back in place. So now we we'll start putting on the details back. We we'll start by popping all the lamp posts back in place. And just for fun, to fill in the space where the water tower is going to be, I thought I'd put a couple of workmen with a wheelbarrow and make it look as though they're digging out a pipe. And uh, I think I need to put a bit of pipe paint on the uh, the ends and finish the pipes off. Uh, but I think that's going to look quite nice in that little hole there. And until we get a new water tower, then that'll be going into place instead. We can take out the loose ballast and it'll be a nice quick job to pop it in. Station here. Nice, neat platform surface. All the figures are back in place, foot bridge is back. I decided actually for the time being I'm going to leave the canopy off that used to sit in front of the station here. Um, I'm going to leave that out and lay out for the time being. Uh, but everything else is just as it was before with a nice fresh paint finish and everything is re-glued in place as well.
Hello. Well, big news this month. Rails of Sheffield's teaming up with the Curascale with a view to producing a double-O gauge model of BR's unique Class 89 electric. Originally intended as a replacement for West Coast and East Coast traction, the locomotive remained a one-off. And Rails are currently looking for expressions of interest at this stage, with plans to produce the 89 in Intercity Executive, Intercity Swallow and GNER Blue liveries. Revolution Trains has also just announced it's looking for expressions of interest for an N-Gage version of the 89 too. More details on their respective websites. And talking of Revolution Trains, they've also just unveiled plans for a double O-Gage model of the BR Southern Region General Managers Saloon. Now this vehicle was famously catapulted into the spotlight when it conveyed Prince Charles and Diana Princess of Wales from London to Romsey following the Royal Wedding in 1981. Three variants are planned initially with era-specific details such as jumper cables, head code boxes, interior seating and the like, plus interior and directional lighting. It'll be available in BR Blue and Grey, Network Southeast, and BR Green colour schemes. And pre-orders are being taken now. You could also win a place on board the real thing for a special rail tour that's happening later in the year. And by the way, Revolution's also considering this model for N-Gage 2 and asking for expressions of interest. So head over to their website for more details on that. Also staying with Revolution Trains, they're making use of research material by flipping scales of its MMA and HOA wagon projects. Now this is partly due to the COVID-19 situation, but the MMA box wagons are now being developed for N-Gage and the HOA hoppers for double O. Development also continues on its N and double O gauge eco fret container wagons, both scales having progressed to the EP sample stage. And just to complete the scales, Revolution's also testing the water in O gauge. Yep, they're commissioning a class 37.4 from Helian as 37405 in direct rail services compass livery. More details on our website at keymodelworld.com. Now, in other news, Dapol has taken delivery of the second EP sample of the double gauge Wainwright D-Class 440, which it's developing in partnership with Rails of Sheffield and Locomotion Models. Seven versions are planned, and it promises a couple of new features, such as a pull-out PCB incorporating a Next18 decoder socket and pinless electrical connection between locomotive and tender. You can see the latest images on our website at keymodelworld.com right now. In Hornby news, the manufacturer has also been very busy with the 00 APTP moving to tooling, while the first EP samples of its 00 gauge BR Mark I restaurant buffet cars have arrived for evaluation. You can see the latest images in the July issue of Hornby magazine on sale from June the 4th. Incidentally, the Hornby double gauge model of that newly repainted GB Rail Freight Class 66, 66731, Captain Tom Moore, a true British inspiration, has now raised £140,000 for NHS charities together through sales on the Hornby website. Fantastic. And finally, for the moment, Ellis Clark Trains has launched a new range of O-gauge ready-to-run models with announcement of a new 22-tonne press flow cement wagon. Early and late liveried examples are planned, covering square and rounded hopper options, along with models with or without marketing boards. It'll feature an injection moulded body and die car chassis, and delivery is anticipated for the first quarter of next year. And a gentle reminder that you can catch up on the very latest news over at our new website, keymodelworld.com. That's www.keymodelworld.com. Right, I think it's time now to join Richard Watson in his workshop for the very latest on developments with our 009 narrow gauge layout, Wardle Bay. Thank you very much, Mark. So yes, you join me once again in my workshop for what seems to be another month and another layout. This time we have a 009 gauge layout, Wardle Bay. Now this featured in Hornby Magazine 142 as part of the multi-micro layout challenge in which there were four layouts at the time and they were all under six foot and this one being six foot by one foot with a four foot scenic section um, was the uh, preservation period 009 gauge layout. 
This layout was actually built on the remnants of 12 Trees Junction. I think it was one of the uh, scrap pieces of wood from the storage yard. Um, for those of you who remember that exhibition layout. It is a terminus station with two platforms, as you can see where the Baldwin sits. Um, they've used all Pico Code 80 track, and originally it was a DC layout and able to house five DC locomotives and still operate at the same time. All the buildings you see on this layout, such as the engine shed and the station, are Backman Scenecraft buildings. The platform and the roads have been made from Woodland Scenic's uh, road smooth it plaster. Um, the lamps you see are on the station are DCC concepts and of course we have a, uh, a lovely oil drum with some burning wood which is a scale model scenery kit. The layout in its operation is very simple, it's quite literally a uh, station with a run round loop, you've got the odd siding for a bit of freight, obviously the second platform and of course the engine shed. So there's a fair bit of operation you can have with this layout and it's quite fun. As you'd imagine, coming out of storage, it needs a bit of TLC. It doesn't run the best. That's easily sorted. There's also the odd bit of track work that needs replacing. I think I've got a dud point in there somewhere. Now, on top of bringing this back up to par, I'm also adding a four foot section, which I'll be uh, doing as a new video series for our new website, keymodelworld.com, and that'll be going live in the near future. So watch this space for more updates. Another job for the future is to add some lighting. So the engine shed will get some, the station, the actual station lamps will be turned on, and uh, we'll also be adding point motors and a control board. So a lot to look forward to. So as you can see, lots coming from this layout. So stay tuned for more on keymodelworld.com and within Hornby Magazine. Right, time to hand you back to Mike Wilde now, who's still in Totledale for the new additions. We had a collection of new 00 gauge arrivals in the office this month, covering products from Hornby, Helgen, Rails of Sheffield, Locoman Sounds and Hardy's Hobbies as well. Now, just in front of us here, we've got the 00 items, but we've also got a couple of O gauge items to show you as well. So starting at the front, we've got the Rails of Sheffield Dapple Produced Terrier for 00 gauge. It's a brand new edition from them, and there's 12 different versions covering, covering, covering both the A1 original Locos and the A1X type of Terriers as well. Now our sample there that's now being fitted with a Zimo sound decoder to give it a little bit more testing as well to find out what it can do and how the speaker performs. And if you're a Hornby Magazine subscriber, we're going to have a specific video showing you how to install sound in that loco on our new website, keymodworld.com. Now there's also going to be a video here on YouTube as well showing the model running with sound with a freight train on this layout, so there's plenty of everyone to watch. Next behind that, we've got the new Helgen Class 33 Ohm. Now, Regular readers might realise that the Class 33 has been around for a little while with Elgin, but this is a new version. So this is what they're calling their version 3 Class 33. And it's got revised grills, it's got the new roof moulding on it, and it's the first time in 14 years, they tell us, that they've done one with a high intensity headline on it as well. There's quite a few different versions out of that now, and our version here is 33030 in EWS maroon and gold, the only one to carry that livery. At the back here, for modern modellers, we've got a real treat, we've got the new Mark III sliding door coaches. Now our set here, they're in Great Western Green livery, but they're also coming in Intercity 7 Scott Rail livery, as well as cross country colours as well. And for each of those liveries, there's a full set of vehicles to make scale length trains as well. Next along, we've got the Locoman Sound Sound Fitted A3. Now this is using the Hornby model as its basis, and Alessandro from Locoman Sound has installed it with a ESU Lock Sound 5 decoder. And he's also given us a few extra treats in there as well. He's put a smoke generator and working directional lights on it as well. So we're going to be putting together a separate video on that, showing all those functions to go with our review, which is in the latest issue of Hornby magazine. And finally at the front for double O gauge, we've got the Hardy's Hobbies Hudswell Clark Slope Sided Tank Kit. Now this is a 3D printed resin body kit, which is designed to fit on the Electrotrend 060 tank chassis. Now we've got a full step-by-step -step guide on how to build that in the next issue of Hornby magazine. That's HM157, which is on sale from June the 4th. 
It's a nice little kit, simple to put together, two or three evenings and you'll have a lovely little OK that's different to everything else in your layout. Right, let's go and have a look at the O-Gauge. So, pride place behind me goes to the Hatton's O-Gauge A4. Now, our sample model 6 treble 9 new in South Africa, and that's one of several versions of the A4 that have just been released by Hatton's. These locos have been made by Helgen for them, and they cover both the original streamlined locos with valances on them as well, which are available in LNER Silver and LNER Garter Blue. And there's also the later versions as well without valances, and they're available in BR Lined Blue, BR Lined Green with early and late crests, and a choice of tens as well. And it happens I've done quite a lot of research on these, and they've also come up with different chimney formations as well for the different locomotives. So, for example, Union South Africa here, that's got a double chimney. They've also got a lock sound L decoder socket in the tender, that space for two speakers. So there's quite a lot going off with these locos. And you can read our full review of the new Hatton's A4 in the latest issue of Hornby Magazine. Joining the A4 here, and I had to uh, get a wagon in somewhere, is uh, my latest construction project, which is a, a Parkside Models GWR towed brake van. And as you can see, it's in the early stages of the construction at the moment. I've done the basic body shell, I'm starting on the running gear at the moment. Uh, and then I've got all the additional details to do, such as the buffers and the draw gear, and all those finishing touches that will make it ready to go into the paint shop. Uh, and that obviously, that'll be joining the fleet to go out on the garden railway as well. Uh, where obviously a great Western territory would be a perfect addition to go with the Western region locos. Now, also just behind it here is the Class 20 that I mentioned in last month's layout update. Now, this one's been a weathering project and I've been working through that progressively. Uh, it's now pretty much at a point where I'm fairly happy with it and it's fairly complete. Uh, we've got a full step-by-step -step guide will be coming up for how to weather that as well soon as well. Now, the model, as well as having weathering on the outside, it's also got a sound decoder inside. And this is one of the models that actually put the twin track sound Hornby decoder into. So the motor is powered by a DCC concept Zen butter decoder. So that takes care of the high powered motors that are inside one of these Helgen OGA locos. And the TTS sound decoder, it literally provides the sound and nothing else. So it's only the red and black wires from the TTS decoder are actually connected inside there. And they're connected to the track feed from the loco. But it gives a really nice sound, good value too, just under £100 to put sound into this loco. Now, ultimately one day, I might decide to go and upgrade that to a full uh, large scale sound decoder in the Class 20. But for now, it serves its purpose. I've got a second one of those to do as well, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get that pair of Class 20s running soon on the Garden Railway. So that's it for now for the O-Gauge update. So we haven't had a huge amount of new releases this month. Um, to be quite honest, I've been spending a lot of my time outdoors enjoying the really good weather having running sessions, so I haven't done as much modelling as sometimes I do. Anyway, join us next time for more updates on the rolling stock for both layouts and different scales as well, and we hope you enjoyed what you've seen here today. And also don't forget that all the new products, all the new models that have come in, they're all reviewed in the latest issue of Hornby Magazine. That's issue 157, which is on sale from June the 4th. That brings us to the end of this latest layout update from the Hornby Magazine team. We hope you've enjoyed it and we hope you're also staying safe and well at home as well. Now our next issue, issue 157, is on sale from June the 4th in all good news agents and grocery stores and you can see the cover here. Inside that issue we've got loads of great content as usual including features on a double gauge layout called Middleton Lynn Teasdale which is set in the 1930s. We've also got a layout called Eden Road TMD which is a modern image post 2000 depot scene and something a little bit different too. We've got Gordon and Maggie Gravitt's fantastic 150 scale French layout, Pempool. Now, we don't normally feature overseas layouts in Hornby Magazine, but in this, in this case we made an exception because this layout was just absolutely outstanding, so we couldn't pass up the opportunity to show it to you. Beyond that, we've got loads of great step-by-step -step guides as well, including a guide to weathering buildings with Tim Shackleton. We've got Mark showing us how to install a DigiKeys DCC lighting bar into Hornby Mark 1 coach. I'm going to show you how to build that Hardy's Hobbies 060 tank in double O gauge. Plus, we've got the start of a three part series going into detail on my garden railway. Now, you might remember in the last layout update, we showed a lot more footage of the garden railway and we talked about its construction and its development. 
Now this time in the magazine we're going to go into a bit more detail and over the next three issues we're going to show you how I actually built that in detail. For now though, thank you very much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed all the content here and if you have, please click like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.